So what happened? Did he do it? <laughs> he never got it working, but, <laughs> but it got me to thinking, well, is it really impossible? And the more I thought about it, the more I decided, well, maybe, maybe it could be done. Chris, you want to climb up here? Yeah, let's have a look. <laughs> let's have a look. Oh. This thing, you see how he's got the, the, this rotating thing for oh. turning it real fast? Right, right. The, uh, the so idea... you can track a plane that's moving. Yeah, basically you got two guys. One who's controlling the vertical. Yeah, Oh, I but this part's so. locked. <laughs> oh, okay. What do they have here? Oh, they got filters. Oh, very nice. <laughs> it could be that this was meant to be a multi-purpose gun. I mean, this is definitely anti-aircraft. The games you're making on the mainframes were not any ever going to be commercial products because who had a mainframe? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were just doing it for yourself and to show people. And... Yeah. In 1976, I got the first one running. I called it Tanktics. Oh, right. I've heard of this. Okay. And I will never forget the sense of shock I had when the enemy tanks that I had programmed started shooting me up and destroying all of my tanks and then chasing me right all the way across the board and this was but but you were you would you would enter your move into the computer and then the computer would respond with its move and yeah. you would move the tanks around on a board a physical yeah. board yeah i had a couple of people ask me for the uh schematics the process of creating these games did help you in that way in some way? Yeah, the culmination of all of this was Balance of Power. Where after Which was a peace game. Yes, <laughs> a, an unwar game. Right. And one of the points in Balance of Power was that you do need to use military force occasionally. Right, right. But if you do, you damn well better know exactly what you're doing and exactly what you uh, intend to accomplish with it. And it's interesting to me that that game was very well received. It came out right when the Cold War was reaching its, uh, its peak. Should we try and go back out? Yeah, yeah. And people were scared of nuclear war. Right. And well, well, you know, the first time I ever heard reference to Balance of Power was I was reading the Weird Games Manifesto. And it was talking about how, you know, other art forms can put you into a strange frame of mind or an uncomfortable frame of mind and he was talking about very few examples of games that do this and he pointed out your game Balance of Power because when he played as the Russians it was an asymmetrical game in the way that the world is laid out Yeah. and that he understood for the first time he was sort of put into the shoes of the Soviets and could understand where they were coming from Yeah. <laughs> but you know it's, it's interesting to me that whatever audience was out there for video games or computer games at that time was ready and willing to consume something as complicated and demanding of the player as Balance of Power. Remember, this was personal computers. Right. And uh, back then, in 1985, the only people who owned personal computers were adults. I mean, kids didn't have these things. Right. The market wasn't dominated by children the way it is now. So this is a game where you start off on an island. Um, you have this little creature on the island. Um, mm -hmm. You start off on the island with three other people, three other creatures that are all doing the same thing as you. They're all in the same boat. Yeah. And some of them are moving around to the south. If you walk down, you might see. You saw one of them poke, poke okay. its head up, but you can see what they're. Keep, keep going, and you'll see them down there. Okay, so, there they are. So they've defined a plot for themselves, and they're planting plants in their garden plot. And, uh, okay. And. Uh, and you can define a plot for yourself by clicking that button there. That's the square. The, the, oh, that. Yeah. Okay. 
So. And then use the crosshairs to select and drag a, a oh, region on the see. screen that's okay. yours. You can make your region overlap with the regions of others if you oh, want. Oh, I see. I see. Um, okay. And Good. that's where the conflict and compromise comes from because you can. You can only harvest from the plants that are in your area. Yeah. But you can drag your area around somebody else's area and say, hey, that's my plant too. Oh, okay. Every time you play the game, the plants look different and the leaf shapes and the way the blooms. We can go look at some of the variety here of vegetation. Oh, uh, yes. There's a third gardener over here. Boom. Where is he? Somewhere around here. He's maybe went off in a different direction. He's off by himself someplace. Oh, there he there is. There he is. And he's busily planting. He's already harvested some seeds and he has started some new plants as well. So I just stole fruit from that guy, and he expressed a little anger at me. So his opinion of me has changed. Okay. Because okay. <laughs> I'm a criminal, you know, I'm a... I'm, yeah, you're I'm, safe. You can take this action on somebody's uh, plot, a plant where you go in and you... Where you go in and you, you destroy it. So I'm going to destroy his plant because I'm angry at him. <laughs> okay. And uh, he just stole from my plant, so I'm a little mad at him, too. Um, but if I go and let's say, I'll destroy his next plant, too, that he's trying to water there. So this is my first art game. <laughs> this is, this is... It's very complicated, and a lot yeah. of people didn't understand it, but the people who did, you know, there's a, uh, this sort of choosing how many offspring to have and, and the dynamics of that and so on. And, and eventually, if too much fighting has happened, the island gets so destroyed that there's not even room to grow food anymore. Hmm. Um, so there's also this whole component where you're trying to eventually escape from the island by building this portal of transcendence. And, and that's the first <laughs> layer uh, of the portal. <laughs> But this got rejected by the Independent Games Festival. What? <laughs> As, you know, I don't know, I guess they didn't think it was... If you wanted them to accept it, really, what you should have done is put some thermonuclear weapons in there. <laughs> All right, so you want to show me... Let's, let's do some uh, Storytron stuff. Oh, okay. Actually, you know, the one thing I haven't really seen much of, I've played Balance of Power 2K, or is that what it's called? About 2K, yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess we can run through that a little bit, but I'm, I'm really interested in the authoring tool as well because I haven't really gotten a chance to look at that. Let's see, the basic structure here, here's where you list the verbs, and so there are lots and lots of verbs. And you arrange them into categories that seem dependent on the context of this yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, and you can arrange, you can but that's just, set up that's just for But that's just for the author to look at. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't uh, affect the player. This is a verb where you're asking another yeah. Country for advice. Uh, Asking. What are the characters in this game? Are they uh, countries? The characters are countries. Okay. But of course, <laughs> the most important character is always fate. Okay. And that's fundamental to uh, Storytron technology. Player number zero is fate. And fate does more than all of the other characters right. combined. And do you get to see the direct outcomes of fate? Like the direct. Or is Normally, it kind of happening you express scene? fate. Normally, fate is expressed indirectly. For example, uh, perhaps I should show you... Well, you've already seen Storyteller, right? You've, um, you've I, I can this. see it again. I, I haven't seen it for a while. So. Okay, so here's the, the start. It's right. September 11th. The Al-Qaeda terrorists have destroyed the World Trade Center, killed 3,000 Americans. What do you want to do? So let's set a policy goal. Okay. The obvious goal is, yeah. let's go get Osama bin Laden. <laughs> Guns are blazing. Yeah, yeah. So and that's the execute button there. Yeah, that says, okay, that's the sentence I want. Because if you want, you can change right, it. Right, right. You can and go back and pick something else. Uh, but let's uh, do that. when you, yeah, this means, okay, do it. And now, this is fate, only it says, your advisors present a background briefing about Afghanistan. And then you've got a whole, whole bunch of policy options. For example, we can go and ask very nicely, would you please hand Timidly. over? <laughs> and he comes back and says, no. Okay. So, so now this is get, the country's face there. Yeah, that's him talking back to you. Okay, so let's launch airstrikes. Yeah, <laughs> it's the American thing to do. 